Now you can set up your Noise Sentinel on demand noise monitor. Let's take a look at what you get. You will have received one or more monitor sets and each monitor comes in two cases. The first thing to do is check your inventory against the checklist in the NMT user documentation. Please note the external antenna, the round black item, should be secure and not loose. Press the buttons on the latches to open up and take a look inside. First, take a look at the NMT box and the items inside. The modem router will be in the upper left corner. Backup batteries are below the router and when fully charged they'll give you 32 hours of operation. The 2250 noise monitor is at the bottom of the case but please do not remove it unless absolutely necessary. The power panel is at the top where the unit is activated. Only activate this when everything is connected. Below are the two chargers, which will be wired in. Looking now at the black box, you can find the microphone as well as the calibration unit, which will be used during setup. Also included is the tripod as well as the microphone adapter for the tripod. Guy ropes are supplied for tying down the tripod in windy conditions and a security cable is also supplied for the NMT case. Three sets of power cables are included for different regions. At the bottom are some replacement fuses for the unit and a certification notice for the hardware. The next section contains the rest of the power cables as well as the DC power connection cable for alternative power solutions. There may also be a USB connector cable. This is for depot use and you will not need to use it. And finally, a critical part, the microphone connection cable. So after taking inventory, it's time to review and select your monitoring site and some basic tips follow. Avoid areas of high noise unless of course that's the noise you wish to monitor. Avoid placing the unit under tall trees. Avoid areas of high sound reflectivity or near tall buildings. A secure or secluded area is a good choice also for the unit. An AC power is desirable for extended unattended monitoring. Set the tripod up first. It unfolds and snaps into place and the leg height can be extended by turning the adjustment bands and then re-tightening them. Try to ensure the tripod is level. It should have a level indicator on the upper platform. Remove the black protective cap from the top of the tripod before screwing on the microphone adapter mount. Keep the cap safe for the decommission phase. Attach the mic adapter by simply screwing it into place. If there is a potential for high winds, use the guy ropes initially and optionally a sandbag to stabilize the tripod. An attachment hook is in the center leg underneath.
Next step is to run the microphone cable and this goes up the mic adapter tube. The top part of the adapter can be unscrewed to run the cable up the stem. The lower half of the adapter has a channel that the cable runs into for guidance. Before you run the cable, be sure you're using the right end. Check either the mic or the noise monitor ports to match them up and get this part right. The monitor has been lifted out for this example, but please ensure it remains at least partially seated in the foam while you perform these tasks. Connecting the cable to the mic requires partial disassembly of the unit. These parts are snap lock and easy to take apart. Simply twist and remove them to gain access to the cable sockets. It should attach with a noticeable click and then you can reassemble the microphone unit. Tighten all parts firmly. With the power connected or using battery power, you can then turn on the power unit. This starts the modem and router and the 2250 noise monitor. At this stage, you should get an OK message from the noise monitor. So now we proceed to the, the calibration phase and use the menus on the 2250 itself to get to the calibration process. You'll also need the acoustic calibrator itself, remove it from the case and test it by turning it on and listening for the tone. First remove the windscreen bird spike assembly and be careful to keep this all in one piece. The calibrator is then seated snugly over the top of the mic and then you can turn it on. Then return to the 2250 and start the calibration. You may need to repeat this process until the results demonstrate less than a plus or minus 0.05 decibel drift. Once that's done, exit the calibration menus, and turn off the calibrator and reassemble the microphone. You'll need to follow up the acoustic calibration with the CIC calibration. Doing this will send the corrections to the Sentinel client and finish the process. CIC calibration requires a quiet environment, so you may decide to perform this step before going to site. Tick the box to use this as a new reference, then click OK. To close the case, thread the cables neatly through the outlet on the left side. A padlock is included to lock the case and you can use the steel point on the side of the case to run the security cable to further secure the box. You can then proceed to checking that the monitor is connected and sending data back to Noise Sentinel. And there are two ways to do this, both outlined in your included documentation. Once you've confirmed this step, you're ready to go with your monitor.